I'm Colton Chu. Welcome back to the NN Update. We hope you are doing well as we slowly adapt to the new HyFlex model. Here at NNTV, we've recently started live streaming some of the indoor athletic games. They air live on our YouTube channel, and once the final whistle blows, it's archived on our page. Look out for more streams coming soon, and stay tuned to our Instagram page for more information on game times. In our first story today, we'll check in with the class of 2019 graduate, Maddie Rinaldi who is currently running a Newton special election for city council. Reporter Sam Melville had a conversation with Maddie to learn more about her venture into local politics. With a new generation of activists pushing its way to the forefront of politics, many teenagers and young adults have been empowered to get involved and make change. Newton North graduate Maddie Rinaldi has taken this activism to the next level with her campaign for Newton City Council. I'm running because I love the city. And I want it to be the place that, you know, I and so many others know that it can be. Maddie is running on a progressive agenda in which she'll push for affordable housing, expanding access to public transportation, and achieving carbon neutrality by 2050. Newton is a city that loves to talk a big game. But a lot of times, you know, when it comes time to make bold decisions and really set an example of what brave leadership looks like, we sort of fail to walk the walk. But her main focus will be to connect with the community. I want to be a good listener, a good teammate, and a good collaborator. I noticed a gap in sort of young people seeing local government as not something that, you know, they are a part of or that they can shape, but that's something that happens to them. Hopefully, what I'm looking to do, especially as a young person, is think about ways that can make our local government more accessible to young people. Among Maddie's many endorsements is Ward 1 City Councilor Maria Greenberg, who believes Maddie's youth and progressivism will energize the Newton City Council. I just wholeheartedly um, support her and so enthusiastic about her campaign. Uh, She has a level of maturity and enthusiasm that I think our council really needs. Maddie is a leader for this young generation of activism that strives to make drastic change. Members of Gen Z, so you and I and a bunch of other young people, have unfortunately had to grow up with a collective sort of consciousness or understanding that there are a lot of big urgent issues that have not been addressed in sort of the way that they should have um, and have unfortunately been left to us to deal with. And because of that, we have grown to become activists, not by choice, but by force. We're just not gonna accept the status quo anymore. We know that, you know, we deserve a world that's better than this. I'm hopeful that, you know, our work will be able to sort of create that world. But, you know, it's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take time, but I think it's a process that's worth seeing through. So I'm excited about it. As Maddie has been showing, if you want change, you have to make it happen yourself. And the best place to get involved is with your local government. For NNTV, this is Sam Melville. Thanks, Sam. For more information about the special election on March 16th, go to newtonma.gov. There is no doubt that 2020 was an unusual year for all of us. Now that 2020 finally over, Alex Katz and the crew took to the streets to ask folks what were some of the positive parts of this strange year. 2020 was a hard year for all of us, so we decided to go to Newtonville and ask people what their favorite memory of 2020 was to spread some hope and happiness. Shortly after the pandemic started, we started donating bread to the food pantries. My favorite memory from 2020 was probably being able to travel before COVID started. Uh, my nephew was a big, a big plus. It was my real entertainment for the pandemic. Having more free time to play video games with the boys. We're all home together for the first time in like 10 years. I'm part of Theater Inc. And with the whole pandemic, we figured out new ways to kind of come together and do theater. We got a pandemic puppy at my house. My kids and I love her so much. Say like all the support for Black Lives Matter. It's pretty cool to see the community come together. Um, I got to see my friends during the field hockey season. People also told us what they're looking forward to and excited for in 2021. I'm actually graduating college, so I think we're excited about that. The vaccine, hopefully. 
Well, I'm really looking forward to not wearing masks. I am looking forward to hugging people. I am looking forward to you guys coming back and getting your grilled cheeses here. And I am definitely looking forward to the day we can do samples again. Oh my God, traveling. I love to travel. I'm also looking forward to like maybe trying out the new like high flex thing, like being in person, seeing our teachers and friends. And I'm really looking forward to our musical Adams Family since we're doing it outside, which is super new for Theater Inc and it's gonna be super fun. Reflecting on positive memories from 2020 can give us all an optimistic view on 2021. I hope you all have a safe and happy new year. For NNTV, this is Alex Katz, signing off. Way to spread some positivity. Here's to the start of an awesome 2021. It's been pretty cold to start off the year. Reporter Nora Fine checks in with some information on how you and your family can stay warm this winter season. Hi Newton North. Right now, Newton North is holding a winter clothing drive for faculty and students interested. The drive has various winter clothing items for all of those in need. There are coats, hats, gloves, socks, and shoes available. This drive will continue on for the month of February, but don't wait around. You can get these items in the U-shaped hallway of 250 where they have been for the past several years. Stop by and get some new winter items for the chilly days ahead. Setting off, this is Nora Fine from NNT. Thanks, Nora. If you are in need of a jacket, make sure to stop by and pick one up soon. Now, let's turn to a more serious community story than we usually cover. Reporter Andrew Hirschberg covered the protest rally that was held on January 5th in response to tragic events that recently shocked our community. On January 5th, Mike Conlon, a Newton resident who suffered from mental health issues, walked into the Indulge Candy Store in Newton Highlands. He showed a worker a knife and then went to his own apartment where police came and shot him. The next day, defund Newton police organized a rally to show their anger towards the police's actions. Quickly, the protest turned angry and violent, resulting in yelling and a few fistfights. Yeah, so what about when they yeah, come in here? You're yeah, 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 It's an intimidation that if you were on our side, you would have showed up here. If you would have showed up here with your badges on, with the numbers, with the respect for the people. You don't have any respect for the people. We reached out to the police for comment, but got no response. However, the organizers of the rally from Defund NPD agreed to an interview. We understand that Mike Conlon was um, simply having a mental health crisis and asking for help when he was unfortunately killed. Newton's not like above everyone else. And until people understand that, I don't like to think of the fact that Mike is going to be the last person who could die at the hands of the police. People didn't really seem to understand that a life was lost that day. And even if police followed all legal procedures, that still doesn't justify what happened and that still doesn't make it right. So many people know people who deal with mental health issues or are people themselves who, who do. And to imagine that our only system of law enforcement and of security and of safety criminalizes something that is human and that so many people deal with is heartbreaking. He probably, he would, he would be alive. Uh, this man, this is our neighbor who died. Um, if people who knew how to deal with people undergoing crises were there instead of police who attempted to de-escalate by shooting him with beanbag guns and tasers and then actually shooting him six times. Police are supposed to be trained in a capacity in which they can defend themselves without using deadly force. I know a knife is not as dangerous as a gun. While protesters gave speeches and sang songs, some counter-protesters argued that the police did the right thing. I served this department for almost 30 years. Retired almost three years ago. Until you work at the, the job that I did for 30 years, never know you're going to come home the next at night. You know these people don't understand that. If they think we just go out to kill people. That's not our intention. We just come go out there and want to go home at night and see our families. So I'm here to support my brothers and sisters that I worked with over the years. But I saw on TV yesterday, I saw some officers coming out. And they looked pretty upset. We didn't see no celebrations here from police officers yesterday. This man's mental health safety net failed him. It was a tragic situation and we should be united by our leaders and instead 
They're advocating hate for the police without knowing the answers. So that's why I came down here today. From the West Newham Police Station, this is Andrew Hirschberg signing off. And I'm definitely excited to see so many young people out here because you all are the future. You need to continue this energy going into the next decade and the next decade after that because unfortunately, I don't see these problems ending anytime soon. Thanks, Andrew. We hope this conversation can continue further. Changing directions, with Valentine's Day right around the corner, reporter Emma Bradshaw got together with a few Newton North teachers to test their Valentine's Day knowledge. Hello everyone and welcome to Newton North Valentine's Day Trivia. Today we have three teachers with us here to compete for the title of the official Newton North Valentine's Day Trivia Master. Let's meet our contestants. Hi everybody, I'm Lauren Bogger. I'm in the Phys Ed Health and Wellness Department and um, Peter and Dan, get ready because it's on. My name is Dan Fabrizio. I'm a Spanish teacher here at Newton North and I am excited to participate and winning is just a bonus. My name is Peter Turner. I'm in the History and Social Science Department. I love trivia, but I know nothing about Valentine's Day. First question, what is the most common Valentine's Day gift? Just let me know you're ready and everyone can put up their answer. Three, two, one. Answers up. All right, very interesting. The correct answer is chocolate. Oh. oh. Oh, that was my, I was stressed between flowers and chocolate. So, Mr. Turner got it right. Each year, over 1,000 letters are sent to Verona addressed to what Shakespeare character? Three, two, one, go. And the correct answer is Juliet. Everyone All got it right. right. Who invented the first Valentine's Day candy box? Was it A, Richard Cadbury, B, William J. Cook, C, Milton S. Hershey, or D, Joseph Robertson? Three, two, one, reveal your answers. The correct answer is A, Richard oh. Cadbury. No one got it right. Oh. That seemed no too obvious. Well. Seemed too clear, too obvious. I thought that was the obvious wrong answer, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which state has the highest marriage rate? Is it A, Hawaii? B, Kansas, C, Nevada, or D, Washington? Fabrizio, you seem pretty confident right now. Not at all. I'm just trying to <laughs> pretend. Fake it till you make it. Okay, reveal your answers in three, two, one. And the correct answer is Nevada. Bottom yeah. oh. right. right. Which group is given the most Valentine's Day cards annually? Is it A, mothers, B, teachers, C, wives, or D, children? You know, I have to look on your face right now. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 not com the opposite of confident. Three, two, one. And the correct answer is B, teachers. You're kidding me. No what? way. That's a setup. No that means the kids are going to be giving us Valentine's Day cards now. This last question is worth two points. So anyone could win. How many M&Ms are in this class? Oh. Didn't realize numbers would be involved. Okay. <laughs> oh, I went way low. Oh, God. The correct answer is 318. Oh. Holy Moses. Oh boy. Wow. And the winner is no math teacher. Mr. Turner. Yay. I, I wish I could say it had anything to do with knowing anything. You are officially the Newton North High School Valentine's Day Trivia Master. Uh, I'll, I'll carry that title proudly for the next year. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Turner, on the big win. As we head towards February break, we hope you all have a happy Valentine's Day and spread some love. That's all we have for today's show. If you have a story idea that you'd like us to feature, DM us on Instagram at Newton North TV or email us at newtonnorthtv at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and have an amazing February break.